So it's time to change the fuel filter on the Bobcat T595 and this has the Bobcat Doosan engine in it. So even since 2013, like the, the later uh, Kubota engines, they started using this style fuel filter here. Now this part number 7023589. Now this is 2021 and you're probably not gonna be able to buy these anymore. Bobcat has a new fuel filter. This part number 7400454. You can see how much bigger around it is. Now these are both rated at, you know, Bobcat's gonna say three micron and, and they are efficient to about 99% at three micron. But the difference is this one's gonna hold more water. This is gonna give you more space for that water to have a place to settle instead of trying to get forced through the element itself. Now the element is a hydrophobic element and it does resist water. But the problem is water kills these fuel systems and Bobcat has recognized that I believe and that's why they are going to a larger filter. Now the element inside itself is the same size so it doesn't hold any more dirt or uh, any more particles or finer material. It's basically the same element. You just got a larger uh, volume or reservoir to help separate that water out of the system. Although it is bigger, we know that there's not a lot of space in here for these fuel filters, but this filter actually does fit. Some of the machines, it's tight, it sucks, but it does fit. And this is the filter that you are gonna have to go for, you know, go with now. Uh, your dealers have probably already exhausted their old stock on the, uh, the 702-3589 that we've been using for years. So they supply you with uh, larger um, clamps, uh, worm gear clamps to fit this in there. So, so it does fit. The only machine that I'm aware of that it has to have an extra bracket, and Bobcat will sell you that bracket, is the excavator, the E85. That's the only one that this just doesn't fit in quite you know, nicely, and they'll just give you a bracket to kind of relocate it a little bit. So let's slide it in on the uh, T595 here and show you how it fits. So to remove this filter while the clamps are still tight, I like to grab the actual head part of the filter and turn it and that kind of breaks our seal so it's just easier to take off once we get our clamps off here use an eight millimeter gonna make sure it's tight first and then loosen it and we're going to take these clamps off because we're not going to need these anymore now we have to unplug our WIF sensor, WIF, water in fuel sensor. Unplug that, and now we can spin our filter off. So now our new filter, you know, I like to take just a little bit of clean oil and wipe on that O-ring. And now I was the one who put the fuel filter on last time and you saw I could do that by hand. Now sometimes they're really hard to get off by hand because what happens is these O-rings don't get lubricated when they get put on and, and they're very, <laughs> they're very hard to get off sometimes. You know, you have to use a, use a couple filter wrenches and um, the new, filter you can see on the bottom here has a hex uh, head on there where we can use a one inch socket to help with that installation and removal if need be and even the old filter people don't really realize it's there but you can use a half inch extension that's a half inch square hole right there so we can use a half inch extension and ratchet to help release that if we don't have you know two filter wrenches to grab a hold of it so now that we got our o-rings lubed up we're just going to spin our new filter on and i also like to use just a little dab of dielectric grease on the plug for the water and fuel sensor because we're always plugging and plugging this in, you know, every 250 or 500 hours, you know, I, I recommend 250 hours. And the problem is that seal gets real dry and this helps, you know, keep this plug 
operating nicely you know so it's easier to pull in and out sometimes it's very difficult to get out and sometimes it's hard to even get back in so yeah just a little dielectric grease around the fitting or the uh, the plug and the seal itself now uh, my other video the old filter I don't ever usually really take this um, top plug off the um, plug here to help bleed the system because usually you can just pump it up and it's not a problem to get the air kind of pushed out of the system I've never really had a problem with it however these larger fuel filters it's you can still do it without pulling that but um, it's it's more difficult it takes more time and, and we want to get our keep air out of the system so I'm going to go ahead and back that out and uh, get this primed up real quick or another option I just remembered this doesn't work on all machines but we can uh, turn the filter upside down actually back off our water drain fitting here and now we can use our primer bulb and we're basically just pushing the air out from the bottom that's an easier option some machines it doesn't work because there's not enough line here and you kind of pinch the line it's just it's too hard to do so you will have to take that bleeder screw out of the top okay now that filter is full of fuel no air left in it and i'm going to leave a card up here for my full engine service on this machine and where i talk about we do not want to pre-fill this filter guys that's very important because it is just too easy to get contamination in the filter we always want to screw it onto the head and use our primer bulb to push it through to make sure that no dirty fuel gets into our fuel pump itself. Very important, guys. Plug our water and fuel sensor back in. Then here's our new larger worm gear clamps. We're just going to snake around it. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to position this fuel filter where we don't have any kinks in the hoses. And we also got to pay attention to our wires on our water and fuel sensor that the filter's not sitting too low because the wires will actually sit on hoses and brackets down there and damage the actual wiring to that plug. Okay, that looks good. Our sensor's clear. No kinks in our fuel lines. Primer bulb is clear. Now the D34 engines, the primer bulb is going to get squeezed between the air conditioning uh, cover here if you have AC on it. But it doesn't pinch off the fuel, you know, it just squeezes that bulb a little bit because there's just not a lot of room because this filter is so much bigger. <laughs> battery die? Come on, battery. No. So there's our new fuel filter installed and yeah it, it fits does it fit nicely it, it fits okay you know and when you get your worm gear clamps make sure they are perfect in line with each other when you tighten them for people with me like OCD it just helps our ease our nerves so so if you had any concerns on the new fuel filter hopefully that kind of clears it up for you it does fit in there just fine and you just get more water separation, more capacity in the filter to help separate that water, to keep that water from getting forced through the element 
and into your fuel system and killing your injectors. So any questions on that, let me know. Thanks for watching.